Hey, you're back. We're talking about intermediate accounting in this playlist. And I wanted to actually talk about notes receivable. But the thing is, I can't because I need to talk about the time value of money concept before I actually can. And it also applies to many asset accounts and many liability accounts. So let's go ahead and get this out of the way. It's actually really fun, or at least I find it fun to talk about. So, well, I guess you can find it for yourself. Let's say I'm offering you right now $100 no strings attached and I'm giving you two options. The second option is in one year you can receive the same amount of money $100. Of course you cannot take both options you can only take one and if you were to say you don't know you'd be correct because the thing is we're comparing apples to oranges. What we want to do is we want to convert them both to apples see which apple is bigger and then of course choose the bigger apple. How are we going to do this? Well with interest rates. Let's say if we added additional information of 5% uh, interest at a bank, of course this is really high at the moment because interest rates are low but we're just going to use 5% in this example. Well we're going to take the $100 and we're going to invest it for one year and mathematically it'll look something like this. We're going to take the $100 and then we're going to multiply it by 1 plus 0 0.05 and I'll explain what, she, what each of these are. So this is the present value amount of what we have. 1 is just our initial investment because of course if we just use 0 0.05 it would only give us the interest. We want to have our initial capital plus the interest back. So this is the initial and this is the interest portion and together that's going to give us our future value so we can compare apples to apples. So multiplying 100 by 1.05 is going to yield $105. So of course now that we can compare apples to apples we can see that this is the bigger apple and we're going to choose that or $100 in the present day of course. And I should also say that the time value of money concept helps us determine what a cash flow is worth in either the present day, which I have here, or at a future date. So in this scenario, we actually looked at uh, converting it to a future date to compare the two. What if we wanted to look at the present date? Well, we're going to take the $100. Let me just get rid of this. So. I can draw the arrow going the other way. So what if we wanted to actually have $100 go back in time to see how much this would essentially be worth in the present date? Well, now that we know the future value, because we're in the future technically, it's going to be $100 and our 1 plus 0 0.05 is going to stay the same since the rate is the same and also the initial capital uh, is the same and what we don't know is the present value. So how are we going to actually isolate for PV? Well we're going to divide 100 by this bracketed amount so it's going to look like PV is equal to $100 divided by 1 plus 0 0.05 and that's actually going to yield $95 and 24 cents. So in the second scenario, we converted it to the present day, and we can also see that even in the present day, the $100 right now makes more sense than taking $100 a year from now. So in both scenarios, it's going to prove the exact same thing. So to kind of summarize everything, I just wanted to show that we've learned two equations in this, in this tutorial. The first one, is that future value is equal to the present value times 1 plus r to the power of the number of years. And we haven't really covered time yet, but we will cover this part in following tutorials. So don't worry about that part right now. And the second one was that the present value is equal to the future value divided by 1 plus r. And of course the t will show up there again, but don't worry about that for now as I have yet to explain that. 
And you can clearly see that these two, even though they're different equations, they're both just manipulated uh, from the same variables. So hopefully you understand the time value of money and how we're trying to convert it to the present day or the future day to compare. And I'll see you guys in the next one where we'll actually be talking about or probably more examples from time value of money. See you guys then. If you have any questions regarding accounting or any other material within our videos, you can tweet us at NotePirate, you can like us on Facebook to receive updates, or to share any quick anecdotes about how our videos might have helped. And like always, thanks for watching us on YouTube.